What up, YouTube? It's Dr. Knob coming at you live. It is May 22nd, and I'm starting residency in about exactly a month. So uh, I put out that video where I explained to you guys my residency interviews, all the questions I was asked. I video logged the entire thing, and I appreciate you guys checking that out. And as promised, I wanted to give you guys a video that discusses the requirements and the timeline for residency. I'll be discussing what the websites Frida, ERAS, and the NRMP, what they are and how you're supposed to use them because I, I didn't actually know that myself. We'll be going in depth in this video about each of those things. If you guys enjoy, give it a thumbs up. Please guys, subscribe. I'm trying to get this channel over 100,000. Uh, sometime in my first year of residency, that'd be freaking awesome. So. Appreciate all the support, appreciate all the love out there. I took a lot of time to make this timeline for you guys, so I hope you find it useful. All right guys, much love to you. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, comment them below. Quick disclaimer before we begin, this timeline can vary from applicant to applicant depending on your medical school and if you're an American medical grad or an IMG. But if you use this outline the same way that you use the first aid for step one, you'll find it extremely useful. Alright guys, like I was mentioning before, by February of 2018 I had begun working on my personal statement and I had begun reaching out to physicians I was training under for letters of recommendation. I made sure to ask the physicians, can I have a strong letter for residency? You have to make sure that you have at least three letters in the specialty you wanna apply into. I additionally had a mentor who's a physician write a strong letter as well. I figured that would help me stand out a little bit. Between that time, I was also working on my CV or my resume. I made sure that I had those complete by mid-May I was in touch with my dean and my academic counselor throughout the entire process. So this way, by June, when EROS opens up, I registered and I was able to upload the applications and upload the material that was necessary. EROS stands for the Electronic Residency Application Service. You can Google them for more information and I'll be mentioning them in more detail in the second part of this. It's important to note here that if you are an IMG, this is the time that you will be purchasing your EROS token through ECFMG. You can ask the dean of your medical school for more information. By July, doctors of osteopathic medicine can begin applying to AOA accredited programs. Come July 15th, the AOA accredited programs can begin receiving the applications. Come September, on September 5th, you can begin applying to ACGME accredited programs. This will include usually American medical grads, IMGs, and DOs. Come September 15th, the ACGME accredited programs can begin receiving the applications. It's important to note that before you're able to submit applications to the programs on September 15th, you must have your USMLE Step 1 or your Comlex equivalent completed. It's recommended for IMGs to have your USMLE Step 1 and your USMLE Step 2 CK completed with it uploaded onto ERAS at this time. This is the day you can start registering for the NRMP, which is the National Resident Match Program. We'll be getting into that in the second part as well. From this point forward up until late January, sometimes very early February, interview season will commence. ACGME accredited programs will begin to send you interview invites. This will be via your email and through EROS. Enter October. This is when the Medical School Performance Evaluation or MSPE is released to residency programs. The dean of your medical school is required to fill this out. And then come November and December, interview season continues. In December, the military match results will become available. Come the month of January, the urology match results become available. Come January 15th, the rank order list entry begins through the NRMP website. February is officially the end of interview season. 
The rank order list deadline through the NRMP fell on February 20th for me. During this time, the USMLE Step 1, Step 2 CS, Step 2 CK, or their COMLEX equivalents must be completed in order to submit your rank order list. Come March, the NRMP match results become available. For me, that fell on Monday, March 11th. I found out if I matched. If on this day you find out you did not match, you will be offered eligibility in the SOAP, that is the Supplemental Offer and Acceptance Program. And if you did match that Friday of that week, you will find out where you matched. I submitted my applications through EROS about a week in. Um, so that was like September 23rd or something like that. So programs start receiving applications on September 15th. It is recommended that you send in your applications on that day, Mythbuster. Um, I got an interview the day that I submitted my applications. So I had heard that you have to get it in on the 15th. And if you don't, uh, your application goes to the back and then you know programs don't get to look at your application until the end or something like that but uh, it's an electronic system nowadays and i didn't really have any problems with that this will conclude our residency timeline there's three websites i grew very familiar with through the entire match process these were frida eros and the NRMP. Frida is the AMA Residency and Fellowship Database. It helped me research every program that I was going to be applying to. It allows you to explore by specialty over 11,000 different residency programs based off their location and has 35 different filters. This website helped me make a list of programs that I would be applying to. It included the website of each program and most of the time provides you with the phone numbers and emails of each program while also giving you their requirements to apply. Most of them include the score cutoffs for your board exams, which makes it really, really helpful in order for them to look at your application. It was also a great way to look up average salaries and benefits as well. Again, if these things aren't provided directly through Frida, they, they do give you the link to the program's websites, which would have this additional information. Next, enter EROS, the Electronic Residency Application Service. Of the three websites, this is the one that you will use the most. As we mentioned on the timeline, the EROS opens up in June. You will be responsible for having your token before that. Eventually, you'll get a login and you'll be able to log in through EROS. Most residency programs participating in the main residency match directly use EROS. Large number of fellowship specialties do as well. The reason this website is, in my opinion, the most important is all the work that I put in from February to mid-May, working on my letter of recommendation, the CV, having my transcripts ready, making sure my boards are complete. Those will all be uploaded onto EROS and your Dean will also be uploading your MSPE onto EROS. All of your personal information, your photograph and your program applications are submitted through here. So once I finished up with Frida, I knew which programs I was going to apply to. Once you know which programs you're going to apply to and you've uploaded all of this information, you actually pay to apply to these programs through EROS. You're able to search the program. So once I found programs from Frida, I knew which programs I was going to apply to. I would search them on EROS and I would find them. Then I would be responsible for assigning everything in my application to those programs. Once I knew which programs I was applying to, at the end, I would pay to apply to those programs through EROS. Now, once that's done, EROS has its own email service through the website, which is connected to your email. So programs directly communicate with you through EROS, which communicates through your email as well. So when you are offered interviews, you will be offered them through EROS and via email. You will definitely get used to this website before you find out you match. 
There are some programs that use other application processes. I'm not too familiar with those because every program that I did apply to was directly through EROS. Lastly, we have the NRMP, the National Resident Match Program website. They also call this the, the R3 system, which in the United States stands for Registration, Ranking, and Results. That's what this website is responsible for. This is the final website that you'll be using, uh, and it's the website that you submit your final rank list on. Registration for this website opens up basically the second you guys submit application. So for me, I believe it fell on September 15th. Between January 15th and around February 20th, that was the window period where I really worked on my rank order list. This also costs money, so in order to have a successful rank list submitted before the deadline, you do have to pay some fees. I couples matched. There was an additional fee in that. So come match day in March... It is actually the NRMP that sends you an email letting you know if you have matched or if you have not. There you have it, YouTube. If you guys made it this far, I really do appreciate you. Medspiration's YouTube is nearing 65,000 subscribers. So again, if you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Help us get to 100,000. I'm trying to have that silver play button somewhere in my studio sometime soon. If you guys have questions, comments, or concerns, please comment below. All right, family. Thank you, guys. Take care.